Are you into low content book publishing and looking for new ways for making a puzzle book fast? What if I told you that I found a quick and easy way to make mazes with a maze software that when I'm recording this video isn't even out yet? That's right. Today, I'm going to show you a new maze software that launches on July 7th, 2021. So you'll be one of the first to see this amazing software. Sorry, I had to. It's called Instant Maze Generator, and I hope you're wearing your shoes because I'm going to knock your socks off. Okay, that was really the last one, I promise. Whether you're publishing KDP low content books, publishing on Lulu or anywhere else, maze books and activity books with mazes sell really well. And it doesn't matter if you're making puzzle books for adults or making kids activity books. So enough of this jib jab, let me show you Instant Maze Generator. Well, here we are in Puzzles Generator. Now I'm gonna scroll all the way down to Instant Maze Generator and we're gonna get started. Now, one thing I wanna tell you is that this is not gonna be a full tutorial. They do have amazing tutorials within the system and they'll show you every little aspect. But I did wanna show you some of the amazing things that you can do within the software. And just for full disclosure, I do have the premium package, so I'm able to show you everything. So I'm gonna click access now. And the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna create a collection. Now, collection is a big fancy term for just your collection of mazes. So like your book, basically. Now you can use their default, which is right here, but I'm just gonna create my own. Now, whether you create your own or you use the default, one thing that you need to know is that when you're done with your session, all of your mazes will be cleared off their servers. And that's for your security purposes. So that way nobody can reuse or even has access to your mazes. So I'm just gonna create my own. And let's go to view. Now there's a lot of features in here and I'm gonna to try to show you all of them. But the first thing I wanna show you is what you can do in page settings. So as you can see, the first thing you can do is you can change the page trim. So it defaults to eight and a half by 11, but if you want it to be six by nine, you can do that as well. Next, you can change the page numbering format. So it, again, it's gonna to default to page one, but I can select no numbering, just the number, page one of 100 or one of 100 without the word page. So I'm gonna leave it right now as page one. You can change the page number starting point. Let's say that mazes aren't the first thing in your book. Maybe you've got crosswords or something like that. Then you, know, you can change this to page 20 if you want or 50, whatever it needs to be. Now I'm gonna show you, there's the page one, because you can also change the alignment. Right now it's gonna default to the outside edge, but if you want it centered, just a simple click of the button, we'll jump that over to the middle. Next up, page margins. Now these are in inches as it says right here. You know, right now it all defaults to half inch. If they don't all have to be the same, you can change it to 0.75, whatever you need it to be. Now one of the features that I love about it, and it seems so simple, but it really helps out when creating your mazes, or at least setting up your pages, is showing the page margins. So as you can see, there's a little faint line and that makes it so much easier to know what area you have to actually work with. Next up is show solutions and the number of solutions per page. Now, one thing I don't like is wasting pages in my book. If I have a hundred page book, I want majority of it to be mazes, not solutions. So it defaults to six solutions per page, which seems to be a really nice number when it comes to the sizes of the solutions. And so it's still very clear, but you still get quite a bit of solutions on one page, but you can change it to four or two or whatever you want. And then the final thing is showing the puzzle numbers on the solution. So this is a solution to, you know, puzzle one, puzzle two, things like that. Okay, so yes, there's a lot of flexibility with this, but let's get to the good stuff. Let's get to the mazes. So I'm gonna click over here. And within the mazes, you have squares, triangles, octagons, hexagons, and circles. Now, I personally like when I'm messing around, I like to mess around with the squares because it's the most common. So we're gonna click on it and just as simple as that, I just clicked on it and here it is. I can pull it up here within my margins. I can shrink it if I need to, again, to get more on a page. So I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna show you what some of the settings you can do for that particular puzzle. Now, as you can see, there's an entry point here and one down here, but maybe I don't want, I don't like the way that looks. I can actually click regenerate the maze and now it's here and here. And you can just keep regenerating it until you like the way it looks. Now over here, you can change the background color. 
So let's say I want it to be more like an ocean theme. I can just make it blue. Now I tried to not have a lot of color in my books, uh, preferably only black and white. So that way I can save on the production price, but it's definitely an option that you have. Next up is the wall color. Again, I can just click on a color or I can use one of these defaults and it changes it. This is gonna be our solution color right here, which obviously we don't have a solution right now. So we'll come back to that in a second. This shows us the size of the puzzle. So it's uh, right now it's 22 cells by 22 cells. This is where we show our solution. So if I click on this, there's a solution, okay? So if I go back to here to solution color, I can make that red, all right? But again, I like to keep mine color free, but it's great to know that you have that option. Now, if at any point you accidentally click off your maze, you're gonna notice that all of your options right here, all your settings are gone. Just click right back on it and there they are. Now over here is a really cool feature where it changes the look of your solution. So right now it's a solid line. This one is thick dots. It's kind of hard to tell right now, but if I if I made it bigger, you'd be able to tell. See the little dot or bigger thick dots. Now I click on it again and it makes it littler dots. And I really like this one because this is great for, let's say you're doing some kind of, um, especially for a kid book and you're doing like, maybe they're going from, they're going from the, a, their camel to a pyramid and if they're in Egypt or they're going from their boat to X marks a spot if it's a pirate themed. These can look like steps that the kids take and it's a really cool way to, to kind of bring that all home and, and make it a lot more thematic. Okay, we're gonna jump over here to the maze sizing. I can change the complexity of my maze just by the scroll button right here, okay? Make it easier or more complex. I can change the thickness of the wall I can change the thickness of the solution, all just by moving these slider bars. Now you probably noticed that I did skip over this bad boy right here, custom entry and exit, because you're not limited to the uh, start and stops that the, the system defaults to. And this is something that's different than many of the other systems that I've looked at. So we're gonna click on that. And just by clicking on start cell, I can select up here. And as you can see, it automatically put a start point there and changed my solution accordingly. So if I click on end, I can make the end over here and there we go. So you can start select your own start and stop points. Now you're not limited to just having it on the outside. You can actually click on the inside, like click here and click here and have the maze within the the borders themselves. So it won't even come from outside. So depending on what the theme of that particular maze is, you can really customize it with these start and end points. An awesome feature. Um, now, I'm actually gonna turn this back to the solid lines because I like that better. And I'm going to turn my solutions off for now. There we go. So now that we have our maze, I'm gonna bring this down here a little bit because I'm gonna show you some of these features that you can do. So right here, I can add text and just type in here. If I click in here, obviously I can change the, uh, the font, I can change whether it's centered, left or right justified, the font size, even the font color. And I can take this and I can move it up here if I want. Again, using those uh, guidelines that I have, the margins, and then I can bring this back up. There we go. Uh, right here, I can just add a page because right now it's one page. So I can you know hit click and, and uh, add multiple pages. I can remove pages if I want. If I want to copy this page, like just, you know, maybe I want to, you know, use the same terminology. So I want that same text and things like that. I can just copy this page, just clone it. Um, I don't need, you know, to insert a page, but instead I'm actually going to clone this page. So it'll be exact duplicate. Um, over here, I can actually bulk clone. So instead of doing one at a time, I can clone 50 if I want. And then these arrows are great because these are allowing me to, to move things around. So let's say right now this is page one, but maybe I want it to be page five. I can just click the down arrow and drop it down. So that helped me with the ordering of the pages. Again, I can move things around. I can shrink it. I can add in a triangle one. They, I don't have to be limited to just one per page. I just click on it. There it is. Uh, click on that and then I can adjust 
that. So I can, they don't have to be the same complexity. They don't even have to be the same color. I can put that there. I can put a circle one down here, however I want to set it up. So again, a lot of flexibility within this. So that's the mazes. Now I'm going to show you right here to me, the, my favorite part by far with the exception of the, the showing the, the margins is the uploads. And let's go with this one. Okay, there we go. Let's say I'm gonna start with the fish. So I'm gonna click on the fish and I'm just gonna click insert. Boom, he's over here. I can adjust the size. Okay, so there we go. Now you ready to see something awesome? I'm gonna click on maze and there it is. That simple, it took that shape and turned it into a maze. I'm gonna click on this and I have a lot of the same options that I did before. I can go over here and I can change the complexity, the wall thickness, the solution thickness, the wall color and the solution color. So especially if you're doing a kid's one, I can put that there and here so that way they can see what it's supposed to look like, you know, that it is a fish. And here we go. Let's check out the solution. Let's see where it's at. Okay, I don't like the way that looks. So I can click on this. And again, I can go to my custom entry and let's say I want it to start at the front and I want it to end at that back tail. There we go. So there's my new solution, confirm, there we go. And we're gonna go up and we're gonna add a page. Let's just, let's add a page. So I wanna show you something else that you can do, which is super cool. Here we are in here. And I'm not limited to just selecting one at a time. I can select multiple ones and just instead of hitting insert, I'm gonna hit insert all and it will put each one on its own page. So there's one and there's one. So, so if you wanna just like put all your images in there and upload them all, they'll give them all their own page. But what if you don't want them on the different pages? Maybe you want them all on the same page. So I can, uh, here, let's upload some more images. Let's do this and we'll do the dinosaur. I'm gonna get rid of this guy because I wanna show you. So if I click all of these and I click insert, it'll insert them all onto one page. So insert adds them to one page, insert all adds them each on their own page. So I can just click on this and move him here, him here, let's make him a little smaller. Okay, so we'll put him down here and we'll put this one right here. And so now all of these I have on one page and if I click maze, it actually creates all of the mazes at once. So let's get rid of some of these big ones just so you can see all the mazes that were generated all at once. And again, you don't have to include these images on your uh, your final page. Um, you know, it depends on, on what you want your book to look like, but there we go. So I had everything on that page just by clicking maze was created into a separate maze. I can turn on solutions to all of them. And again, I can click on each one. I can do the entry points. I can change the complexity, the thickness of the wall, the thickness of the solution, everything I could do before, all within this one page. So you can see how fast and easy you can use images. And I just got these images off Pixabay, which are completely free, but um, images that you have that you can just upload into the system, insert them onto your page, and literally click maze and boom, it creates that maze. And again, you're not limited to doing one at a time. As you saw, I can do multiple. And when I clicked on that, it did it for all the pages too. You see that? So it didn't just do it for the one page I was on. When I clicked maze, it creates mazes for every page that's in here. So again, super, super fast time saver. Because now I'm gonna show you some of the done for you backgrounds that they have. So I click on here and we're gonna have some fun. Okay, so there's one of the ones I did. So you got the little clubhouse and the key. poor kid's stuck down here. You can't do anything about it. So let's go to these images and how about we give him a way to get to that ladder, right? So I clicked on the dinosaur. I'm gonna insert it. Here it is here. I'm gonna move him down here. Uh, let's make him a little bigger. Make sure we're working within our margins. There we go. Okay, so we've got our dinosaur. Let's generate that maze. 
We're going to move this maze out. I don't need this guy anymore. Okay, so here's our maze right here. Let's see where they've got the, the entry and the exit. It's down here and up there. Yeah, that's okay, but I think I can come up with something better. So let's go to custom. Let's do the start. Let's see, where's this kid lined up? He's lined up with the, uh, the back foot. So let's just make it, the start's gonna be down here. And the end is gonna be up here, up on the head. So you can get to the ladder right there. So he's gonna jump up here and go here. I can, I could have started it over here at the tail if I wanted to. Again, changing the complexity, changing the thickness, whatever I wanna do. So again, all this flexibility and really tie in the, the theme of the book. So here's the kid, he's gonna climb up the dinosaur to get to his clubhouse. Again, I'm sure kids would just love that particular puzzle page. Real quick, if you're new around here, my name is Keith Wheeler, and if you wanna to continue to get all the hints, tips, and tricks on how to make self-publishing easier, and you can stand the occasional corny pun, well then subscribe to the channel and smash that little bell icon so you can get alerted each and every time I put out a new video, just like this one. Now let's get back to Instant Maze Generator. Now, if you think that this is all that you can do within this system, it would already be a great deal, right? But there's actually one more feature that is just, it's like the cherry on top, if you will. And that is the quick book creator. So let's say you've made some pages and you know, you made your little custom pages, but then you want to throw some other pages in there's, you know, some of the standard, you know, triangles, circles, squares, that kind of thing. You can go to quick book creator, click in here, select what you want the complexity levels to be. So maybe you want them to be all simple, um, a mixture of simple and medium, a mixture of simple, medium, and complex, all of that. And you go through and you decide how many of each shape maze you want included in your book. So keep in mind that if I have, you know, all three of these selected, whatever I put here, it's going to be times three. So if I put five here, that's going to be 15 rectangular mazes because there's going to be five simple, five medium and five complex. And it explains that right here. Um, it's the number of pages per complexity. So there we go. And if you don't want to include any triangles, you just put a zero here. So let's just put a zero here and we'll do, let's just say uh, five of these, five hexagons. So this is going to be nine, 15, 15, and 15. And if I click create book, it's actually going to create those pages added on top of what I've already done. So it's not going to create a whole different one. So if you just want to do a 50 page book, let's say you can go in here and you know, you can just don't bother with any of the, the fancy stuff that we did before, you know, the, the images and all the other good stuff. You just adjust your page settings and then go to the QuickBook creator, come in here, punch in whatever numbers that you want. So if I did, you know, if I wanted a 50 page book, I can do, uh, you know, five, five and five, and that's going to give me 45 right there. You know, 15, 15 and 15, if I'm doing the three complexities and then, you know, maybe a couple circular ones like I have here and then the couple pages for your solutions. And there you go. And so again, you click create book. And as you can see, they've added them in here. Okay. And again, you can go in and adjust the, the complexity and the size and everything else. If you want, you'll want to do this before you uh, click create, but um, you're actually going to go in here and you can change your uh, title and this is going to show up on every page. So as you can see, see right here, uh, I have it set for my perfect maze and then I've got the complexity. So like this is my perfect maze four, and then it shows simple. My perfect maze three, simple. And then as you get more, it'll get down to the uh, complexity, like medium. Okay. Yeah. So these, it's going to do the, all the simple ones first, but I can click on this right here. So right now we're on page 14. I'm going to click on this and this will randomize your pages. So it, it just mixes things up. So as you can see, you know, here's a, um, a complex one, a complex uh, octagonal one. And then here we go. This is a simple octagon. 
again, just mixing it all up. Again, another variety that you have, another option. And these are just some of the amazing things that you can do within Instant Maze Generator. Now, wasn't that awesome? Yeah, wasn't that awesome? So again, if you wanna pick up this quick maze generator, head on over to kwheelerbooks.com slash IMG for Instant Maze Generator. Now, if you missed last week's video, where I showed you a software that'll help you make crossword puzzles, word searches, and a whole lot more, well then check out this video right here and see exactly how easy it is. Now, if you've already seen that video, then check out this video right here that YouTube says is perfect for you. I'll catch you in one of these videos, and remember to write right.